Consumer demand for diamond jewellery in 2014 was very pleasing. It grew by about 3% globally and for the first time exceeded $80 billion of sales. So very, very pleasing for us. Each of the top five markets performed well, particularly in local currencies, although the non-US denominated markets performed less well in US dollars. So the big three markets performed very well in local currency terms. The US grew 7%, which was very pleasing given that it is a big mature market. China grew 6% in local currency terms and India 3% in local currency terms, the latter two being affected by the strong US dollar. And even in the next two big markets, which are Japan and the Gulf, they both grew 2% each in local currency terms. So very pleasing growth across the main five markets, which account for about 75% of diamond jewellery demand. The downstream trends we identified in the 2014 report uh, really continue throughout the year. Um, significantly, online has become and remains a very important channel both for research and for purchases by consumers. Um, and the rise of brands continues to dominate. So those two themes continued uh, playing through strongly. And the other theme we identified in the previous Insights reports, which is the battle with other luxury products for share of advertising voice continued and actually pleasingly there was a slight improvement in the amount spent uh, on diamond jewellery advertising as opposed to its competitive set in 2014. The outlook for consumer demand this year is really affected by three different factors. The first is the strong US dollar which has um, a negative impact in the non-US dollar uh, countries, so China, India, Japan, etc. The second one, of course, is the slowing Chinese growth, which is having an impact on diamond jewellery sales in China. And the third one is there is uh, excess stock, in polished stock in particular, in certain of the retail markets in which we operate. So we would see that for the 2015 year, diamond jewellery demand is likely to be net-net about flat vis-a-vis -vis 2014, strongly affected by currencies. In 2014, rough diamond sales were up about 12% to a total of about $20 billion. De Beers' share of that uh, remained the same as about 34%. In terms of production, uh, probably slightly less carrots were produced globally, uh, about 3% down to about 142 million carrots. But in value terms, there was about a 6% increase, so about $19 billion in total rough production for 2014. Russia and Botswana remain the two biggest producers of diamonds. So Russia produced about 26% and Botswana about 23% by value of all diamonds produced. And Russia remains the biggest producer of diamonds by volume at about 27% for the year. There were a couple of new mines, uh, three mines brought on stream in 2014. Um, with two to be commissioned in 2015. Uh, overall though, the, the scale of production coming out of these mines is not significant enough uh, to have a material impact on the supply-demand fundamentals of the industry, which remain very good. There's no doubt that there will be less production in 2015 than there was in 2014 as a result of all these factors that I mentioned, the strong US dollar, Slowing, slowing Chinese growth um, and excess polished stock at some retail arms. So we would expect there to be a little bit less production in 2015 over 2014. India is an exciting uh, jurisdiction for the diamond jewellery market in general. Firstly, it's a big economy, it's a fast growing economy, so those are all very positive. Um, the diamond jewellery market in India has in fact tripled in size in the last 10 years. So it's grown tremendously well over the last 10 years and in fact has had almost uninterrupted positive growth over the last 20. So it's a particularly exciting market for us. As the expanding consumer base grows and as the economy grows, um, you can see that it's an, a market in which we would expect more growth to take place. So a very positive market for us in general going forward.
The retail sector in India is, um, in some senses, no different to in the rest of the world. It's uh, more family-owned businesses, uh, but we would expect to see chains rising. We, we do see already more and more online influence, both in terms of research and in terms of purchases, and brands are becoming increasingly more important in India too. India is an exciting place with, an, with exciting growth prospects. Its GDP growth for 2015 is expected to exceed China's for the first time, which is very positive for India. We would expect its labour market, for example, to be bigger than China's by 2025. And that brings with it a tremendous amount of more affluent, aspirational people. So we expect 75 million new households in India um, over the next 10 years to reach and exceed the $5,000 to $6,000 of annual income threshold, which is the inflection point for houses start making proportionately more diamond purchases. So as the affluence grows in India, we would expect aspirational purchases to continue to grow, and that's clearly very, very good for the diamond jewellery business.